Hello grade 11s. Today we focus on the normal force. Let's ask Nelly to help us out here. Let's start by looking at exactly what the normal force is. When an object pushes down on a surface, in other words exerts a force on it, the surface will in turn exert a force away from the surface and acting perpendicular to the surface on the object in accordance with Newton's third law. This force is called the normal force. As with many scientific terms, the everyday meaning of the word normal does not apply here. This term actually comes from geometry and you should remember it from the work you would have covered in geometrical optics. If a surface and a line are at right angles to each other, we say that the line is normal. So any line that is at right angles to a surface is called a normal line. And so, the force coming from a surface and acting away from and at a right angle to the surface is called the normal force. Now let's examine the forces that act on me when I sit on a chair to see if we can identify the normal force. We will do this by drawing a free body diagram of this situation. Remember, the center of gravity of my body is represented by a dot. We draw the forces that act on me on the dot. All objects on Earth are attracted to the Earth. From what you have learnt about gravity and mechanical energy, you should know that we call this force of attraction of the Earth on a body, the body's weight. So we can draw in the force of the Earth acting on my body and I will label it weight. There is also another force acting on me. The chair pushes up on me to support me in the sitting position. So we draw in the force of the stool pushing up on me. Because of Newton's third law, I know that this force must be directly opposite to my weight and equal in magnitude to my weight. We use the same type of symbols that we use in maths to show that two things are of equal magnitude in science. So we mark both these forces to show they are the same size. But what else can we say about this force? Do you see that this force is coming from the surface of the chair and is acting perpendicular to the surface of the chair? This means that this must be the normal force exerted in this situation. While I'm sitting on this chair, my body is at rest. It's stationary. I am going nowhere. I'm just sitting. This very obvious fact tells me something about the resultant force acting on me. Newton's first law of motion tells us that a body will remain at rest unless a resultant force acts on it. So because I'm not moving, we can conclude that there is no resultant force acting on me. The sum of the two forces acting on me gives us a resultant force of zero. We can say that the forces are in equilibrium. Look carefully at this diagram again. Do you think this tells us that the normal force is always the reaction force counterbalancing the weight of the body? Let's look at two more examples to see if we can answer this question. What would the normal force be if someone pushed down on my shoulders with a force of 60 newtons while I was sitting on the chair? Where would we find the normal force if I push this box against a wall? If someone pushes down on my shoulders, the magnitude of the force exerted on the surface of the chair is now 60 newtons plus my weight. The surface of the chair exerts an opposite force equal to the sum of these forces. This is the normal force. In the example with the box, the box experiences a force due to gravity equal to its weight and exerts a force equal to its weight in the opposite direction on the earth. But the surface of the box is interacting with the surface of the wall. So the normal force in this case is the force perpendicular to the surface of the wall equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the push exerted by the box on the wall. I hope that you can see from all these examples that the normal force is often but not always the reaction force of weight. Here's a girl on a normal bathroom scale. You should remember that this type of scale is designed to convert weight into mass to give you a reading in kilograms. The reading on the scale says her mass is 52 kilograms. This means that she has a weight of 52 times 10, which gives us 520 newtons. So she pushes on the scale with a force of 520 newtons, and the scale pushes up on her with a force of 520 newtons. When the girl stands on a bathroom scale, the reading on the scale gives the magnitude of the upward force exerted by the scale on her. That is the force perpendicular to the surface of the scale and acting away from the scale. This is of course the normal force. 
Now let's tilt the scale. We will put it on an inclined plane, that is, on a slope. Should the scale read the same force when it is on a slope? Oh, this is interesting. She seems to have lost some mass. The scale now reads her mass as 50 kilograms. We know that things cannot just lose mass. So why has the normal force reduced when the scale is on a slope? We can work it out by drawing a free body diagram. Firstly, her body is represented by a dot. I have also drawn the slope and its angle to the horizontal into the diagram so we can clearly see where the other forces act on her. The normal force is 500 newtons and it acts perpendicular to the surface of the slope. Her weight is 520 newtons and it acts downwards to the center of the earth. Because she is standing still, we know that there is no resultant force acting on her. The resultant force must be zero. There must be another force acting up the surface of the plane to keep the girl stationary and the other two forces in equilibrium. You've guessed it. It is frictional force. This force acts along the surface of the plane. Now for the really fascinating part of this demonstration. When forces acting on a body on an inclined plane are in equilibrium, we can rearrange the forces into a perfect closed triangle. We have another movie all about friction. But for now, let's examine this situation a bit more while we focus on the normal force. This body is on a horizontal surface. So the body's weight pushes directly into the surface. By directly, we mean perpendicularly at right angles. And the surface reacts by pushing back on the body. So the normal force the surface exerts on the body is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the body's weight. This is the free body diagram for this situation. The surface is now tilted. We say the body is on an inclined plane. Now the body's weight does not push directly into the surface. Instead, only a component of the body's weight pushes directly into the surface. Let's imagine we position a Cartesian plane over this diagram. We tilt the Cartesian plane so that its x-axis is along the slope we see that weight's component into the surface now lies on the y-axis. So we can call this component the perpendicular, or y, component of the weight. For short, we can say wy. The normal force which the surface exerts pushes exactly against wy. So the normal force is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to wy. Let's say we are asked to calculate the magnitude of the normal force exerted on an object on an inclined plane. What do we do? The normal force has the same magnitude as Wy. So we need to calculate Wy. But firstly, what does Wy depend on? Wy depends on the angle of the slope and the magnitude of W. Let's call the angle of the slope theta. From your knowledge of geometry, you should confirm that the angle between wy and w is also theta. From your knowledge of trigonometry, you should confirm that wy equals w cos theta. And then once you have wy's magnitude, you know the magnitude of the normal force. So let's look at the problem for us to solve. A 52 kilogram girl stands on a bathroom scale, tilted at 30 degrees to the horizontal. What does the bathroom scale read? The bathroom scale reads the magnitude of the normal force that acts on the girl. So that's what we need to find. In this case, theta is 30 degrees. So the angle between wy and w is 30 degrees and wy equals w times cos 30 degrees. The girl's mass is 52 kilograms. Remember that on Earth, a body's weight is approximately 10 times its mass. So the girl's weight is approximately 520 newtons. So wy equals 520 newtons times cos 30 degrees, which equals 450 newtons. 
the direction of this force is perpendicular into the slope. The normal force has the same magnitude as Wy. So the answer to our question is 450 newtons. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. Remember that you can get more practice in the task video. Do not forget to watch the other videos in this series too. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.